If you need permission to let go of some of these organizing containers or systems or <clears throat> ideas about organizing that you need to let go, you know what I'm talking about. This is full permission for you to just wipe the slate clean and move forward in grace. <laughs> Some people are amazing at organizing. It's like they've cracked some secret code. One that I'm guessing you just have not figured out yet. That is until today. I wanna to share my three top tips for at least starting the journey. I mean, it is a journey to get organized. It's not a one and done, and we all have to start somewhere. So let's get started. Well, hello friends, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. Organizing isn't something that comes naturally to me. And I think that's something that like 95% of people say, whether they are terrible at organizing or their home is like the ad for the home edit products and it's perfectly organized and they're, I don't know why they think they're not good at it. They just are. but. I'm not, which is weird because I'm super good at Tetris and packing cars, but I still get hung up when it comes to figuring out where my stuff needs to go in my house. But before we get to the tips, we need a little reality check. Chances are pretty good you've made it at least this far with your own organizing skills. I mean, you've survived the messy laundry room, the kitchen pantry that doesn't exactly look like Food Network's pantry. I mean, who's, I don't know, somebody's pantry looks like that. It's not mine. And at least one pile of paper that has probably fallen over. But when you look at it, it feels overwhelming. And this is one of the first places that we go wrong. Those feelings of overwhelm can cause us to put a far greater weight on the successfulness of our organizing with the successfulness of life in general. I mean, how many times have you felt like you're a complete mess, just you, not even your house, but just you, and you say to yourself, if I could get organized, none of this would be a problem. Guess what? Me too. I say it all the time, especially when things feel a little chaotic, which is why you, friend, have come to the right place. Myself and several other YouTubers and a lot of other folks have gotten together for the Get Organized HQ Virtual Summit, which is happening September 12th through the 16th. Now, registration is free and it is already open and available. You can use the link in the description to take you there and register for free. But let me give you a little pro tip. For the last few years, I have been an attendee. I have found loads of great videos and PDFs, transcripts of those, and lots of other bonuses through the All Access Pass, which let me tell you friends, for someone who has gone back and watched some of those again and again and again, it's totally worth the value. You are gonna get a ton of stuff, but I want to emphasize, this is free and you should use the link below to register. It will cost you nothing but your time. There are a ton of great speakers again this year, like there always are, and I am so excited for you to share in this experience with us. Now, I'm not saying that organizing won't solve some of your problems or at least ease some of the struggle, but we do put a huge weight on something that just is what it is. All of these organizing systems, the products, all of the things that you have to put in them and don't have to put in them, they're all just things. It's really about what we bring to the table, so to speak, when it comes to organizing. Now, just because we put a greater weight on organizing sometimes than we should, I'm not saying that it won't solve your problems or at least ease the struggle. Getting organized will totally help alleviate some of the pain points in your home, but don't be surprised if it doesn't solve all of the issues that you have the way that you think it might. Organizing systems are not 
magical and they require work just like everything else does. But the payoff to this work is big, okay? It is going to help you at least be able to free up some time and focus on the things that will transform your life in the long run. So let's get to the tips. Tip number one, identify your pain points. I know, I know, everybody's tip number one is declutter. And while I think that is a totally great place to start, I have an entire like whole channel and everything built around decluttering, okay? It's important, but we all have to start somewhere and our pain points are the best place to start. Oftentimes we wanna to go to the more visible places or we wanna steer clear of emotional spaces until we've built up our decluttering muscles or we just want to like organize the stuff that's hanging around that's the highest on our kind of visibility priority list. But that doesn't always solve the problem. Yes, those places may need to be organized. But if we don't evaluate our pain points, we can get tripped up in those cute little IKEA organizing systems that we just want to make work somewhere because they are so cute. They really are, aren't they? And the container store, like so cute but it may not actually solve the problem that I need it to solve. What has helped for me to simplify and organize our home has really been to look at the things that are causing me the most stress. For me, that has been kids' clothes, including laundry, my kitchen, and toys or activities in general. My kids are getting a little bit older. They're 11, 10, and seven now. And so toys aren't real high up on the priority list, but things like brain flakes and Legos and like all of those things are pretty high up on the list and art projects. Arts and crafts at my house, they could run wild. So how did focusing on my kids' clothes really help in general in the organization in our home? Well, once I got that under control, I could work on some of the other areas because my stress level was down. So even though our dining room and my office are the most visible places in my home and do also require decluttering and organization, if I was stressed out because of all of the laundry that I was continually chasing after and trying to figure out how to store the clean clothes, the dirty clothes, and the clothes to be, I would have had decision fatigue a lot faster in some of those areas because I wasn't actually tackling the issue that I wanted to resolve, which was the high stress level in my home because of clutter and disorganization. So get real about your pain points, friends, and tackle those first. Tip number two, the system won't work if you don't work. Yeah, this is a hard one. I have bought many a mail sorting systems only to have them fail because I just didn't do it. It was so much easier to leave the stuff lay on the counter or leave it in my car or leave it on the table or leave it wherever I just so happened to drop things because I was rushing through the house. Now, as I mentioned, the organizing system is what it is. It just is, it's neutral, it, it just exists. It's there for us to be able to use or not use. And if we find that a system just isn't coming naturally to us, it doesn't really seem to solve the problem even when we do use it, then we need to give ourselves the out, okay? Receive God's grace that you are not being a good steward of this item and pass it along to someone that may be able to use it. Now, that being said, you do have to actually use the items that you have put in place for organization. We can make things easy, but we can't always make things like 100% effortless, which is sometimes what we want when we are in super high levels of stress. We wanna go with the path of least resistance, but that doesn't always get the job done, does it? Our brains love autopilot. We love to be able to complete tasks without having to think about every last little step. 
Think about the last time you went grocery shopping. How much of the trip do you actually remember doing? I think we can sometimes find ourselves in the moment paying attention, but by the time we get to the checkout, we don't have a real clear recollection of walking down all of those aisles. And it's because our brain is on autopilot. We're just doing the things that we do. We're going to the places that we go to every week, which for some of us, maybe the pickup spaces outside the side of the Walmart, and that's just fine. But we go to those same places because the stuff has always been there and that's where we look for it. The same will be true in our homes when we put in practice the systems that work best for us. Now, a big part of making these things work for us is understanding ourselves. And this, can be a hard lesson. For example, I deeply desire to be the person who decants spices into beautiful little glass containers with like the prettiest of Cricut labels on them. And every time I go in the kitchen and I reach into the cabinet, they're just so beautiful. I can't help myself but to want to cook. I wanna be that person. I am not that person. I'm just not. I am not going to decant things. I want these little short bins that I can toss those prepackaged spices in and just reach for the whole thing when I'm cooking and get through dinner fast. Because at this stage in my life, I am on the run. And yes, doing all of those things for some people may actually make the job easier for them. They like the way that that looks, they have the time and capacity and the capabilities of doing that, but for myself, it's just not on the table right now. And that's okay. If it is for you, great, do it, we love it. Post pictures on, on Pinterest and we will all look at them in the evening and think about how we would love to be those people. But if you're not, just do what works for you and move forward so that you can get the things that you need to done and have a lot less stress at the end of the day. Which leads me into tip number three. Three? Three. Don't make something work if it's not working for you. Seriously, stop trying to force yourself to use some system that just isn't working, that's frustrating yourself or the people in your home. If you make it hard for them, they're not going to do it. They just aren't. Did you buy a wire shelf extender thingy at the dollar store and it's not actually sturdy enough to hold those bowls? You should get rid of it. It's okay. Did you spend like, $50 on a plate organizer from the container store and it's not working for you, it's okay to put it on Facebook Marketplace and let it work for someone else. It's okay. It really is. If you need permission to let go of some of these organizing containers or systems or <clears throat> ideas about organizing that you need to let go, you know what I'm talking about. This is full permission for you to just wipe the slate clean and move forward in grace. I know that you spent money on them. I know that they're pretty. I know that you wanted them to work. I know that you wanted a lot of other things in your life to work. But if they're not working for you, they're increasing the stress level. We are frustrated in our relationships, in our home, in ourselves, because of some of these ridiculously small inanimate objects that absolutely have no power to change the things that we want them to change. If it's not working, choose peace, choose relationship, and move along to something that will work. Often, if we just slow down a little and really think about the people who are using these places and things and items 
and we consider the problems that we're really having, I know it takes time and it takes practice to look at a space and wonder, what am I doing wrong here? Why are these things always out? If we will take a good, hard, sometimes prayerful look at the things that we have in our home, we really can pull these spaces together with a lot of advice from others and from ourselves and a whole lot of grace. Let me show you some of my spaces. My kids' shoes always seem to be part of a game of cornhole that they are the only ones playing. They stand outside of the closet and kick them into the closet in the hopes that they get into their actual bin. So having something that was complicated that they were gonna have to put on a shelf or really have any form of organization other than throwing them into a bin was just not going to work. So each of my kids has one of these little bins in this little modified coat closet and their three pairs of shoes go in there. Now, sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, but typically they have a pair of tennis shoes a pair of sandals, and a pair of shoes for church. Sometimes as they're growing out of something and into something or a season's changing, like it's back to school time right now, so they have their older shoes that are really gross and like scuffed up that we can take camping or hiking, and then they have their shoes that they wear for school that we aren't ready to kind of like put through the ringer at this point. So they do have some extra pairs, but at the end of the day, when those get a little out of sorts, I just pull them out and ask the kids to sort them and it's so super easy for them to do. Now, I already mentioned my spices. I love these little containers. I did this little organization a couple of months ago and it has worked fan fantastic. I have them sorted into kind of loose categories. So my more savory spices, my more sweet spices, but also things that pair with them. So because we from time to time will cook Indian food, I have a lot of those warmer spices with this like cinnamon and nutmeg and things like that. And then I also have a container for things like taco seasoning and ranch dip and some of the odds and ends that we'll use for seafood or Mexican food or some of these other things that don't fit into a category. I also have a smaller bin here that I keep our more everyday spices like salt, pepper, garlic. I also try to keep things simple in our bathroom. These little organizers from Target have been great. And again, I'm just lumping things into loose categories, but a lot of that is just my organizing style. It works for us, it's easy to clean up, and we have been doing this now for a good three years, and I don't see us having to change it in the future. Kitchen drawers are another area that can sometimes be tricky. One of the things that helped the efficiency in our kitchen was moving my sharp knives and cutting boards and any of my other cutting utensils like apple slicers or peelers, all of those things that kind of, I would say slice and dice should all be in the same drawer with the things that you're going to use to cut them on. And one of my favorite organizing places is my quiet time bag. I have all of my Bible study supplies and all of the little goodies that I like to use to find time with the Lord in the morning all right here. And I can pick it up and take it wherever I need it to go. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget the registration link in the description below and be sure to check out the other contributors in this playlist as we gear up and get organized with the Get Organizing HQ Summit. Thanks so much for watching and until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight.